Hi, I wanted to make this video to help clear up a little bit of the confusion that I think that we're all noticing uh, in trying to describe the difference between modal music and tonal music. Uh, there is kind of a difference between these two types of music. In some cases, it's a little subtle, but I think in general, you can safely say that modal music has a historical component that tonal music does not have. And the reason for that is because modal music is how things really got started. Back in the days when uh, the monks in church put sacred text to a melody. Um, and in so doing, they made it much more palatable and easy for people to listen to. It was a great innovation when they did that. The next thing that sort of came along was organum, which is two parallel voices uh, singing together. And organum made it even more interesting because of the harmony. And it got us away from what we call monophony, right? Monophonic, one melody line and nothing else. Um, what re and then gradually that organum started to free up and they started singing two completely separate um, monophonic lines. So it is what we call polyphonic or duophonic to be exact. And this was really the, the onset of counterpoint. This is where it all started. Um, and for many, many years, that's the way things were until they decided to add a third part. And that was a, a really important innovation because what the third part did when it was added, it formed what we now call triads, even though they didn't call them triads back then. There were major chords, minor chords, augmented and diminished chords, suspended chords, all sorts of chords being formed. Uh, and for the first time, composers not only looked at the composition in a linear format, but also in a horizontal way, because they could actually tell when chords were being formed that would shift the harmony in subtle ways. As these chordal uh, points of interest developed, composers took advantage of this and actually started writing with certain chord changes in mind. And that's when they developed the idea of being able to lead from one chord into another chord, into another chord. Cadences were developed. Um, we all know what those are. Um, but the salient point here is that music that was pre-Baroque era, maybe Renaissance, medieval music, tends to be modal because chords had not yet come on the scene. Um, later on, after chords were developed, tonal music was born. And I would say 99% of the music we listen to today is tonal music. If you want to find a piece of purely modal music, <clears throat> probably the easiest way to do that would be to go back to music that was written in, in the pre-Baroque era. Otherwise, there are a few examples of modern modal music, and those, the ones that I can think of are mostly in the jazz idiom. Jazz is, is a genre where the composers are thinking consciously about the scales they're using because they're gonna be improvising over these pieces. So they're trying to get a desired effect, and they're working within the confines of a certain mode. If a piece adheres to one and only one mode, even though it has chord changes. We would call it modal. For instance, um, if you take an example like Herbie Hancock's Maiden Voyage, you will find that this piece is all written in the Dorian mode. Um, everything about this piece sticks to Dorian. So I would say that this is an example, a good example, of a modern modal piece. But these types of pieces are very difficult to find because most everyone is now writing tonal 
music where the chords are really important. And if you come up with a pop song that has a, a chord progression, chances are it's going to be tonal. And the reason why is that it may stick to one mode for the chorus and then use a different mode for the verse. Well, that doesn't really count as a, um, a real modal piece. Because um, if you look at it that way, all tonal music uses modes. All music uses modes, because modes are just scales. Those two words are synonymous. So what we're really trying to get you to do is distinguish the difference between modal, which is purely mode-driven, no chord changes, unless they come from one mode and one mode only, and tonal music, which is everyday music that crosses over all the genres. Um, I hope that helps explain um, how this works and maybe it eliminates some of the confusion because I know some students were talking about, well, it didn't use the major scale or the minor scale, so it must be modal. Well, that's not true. The major scale is the Ionian mode. The minor scale is a natural minor. So those two are both modes. Um, it doesn't really have to do with that. It has to do with either music that was written before the Baroque era where they didn't know about chord changes or music that is purposefully trying to stick to one and only one mode. Thanks.